<coughs> okay, Torah, Pashas Nerach, page 18. Okay, Dal Trebo is explaining in the Biur, after the Maimir, Dal Trebo is explaining that what he mentioned before, that the davening of a Baal Asik, of a business person, could even be higher, it's a higher level than the person of a um, Baal a- a- Yeshiv Oil, Yeshiva boy, or somebody in the occupation of state of things. Okay, so he starts to ask you, what's the purpose of the Shama coming into the world? There's such a tremendous de- descent. But nevertheless, there has to be a purpose in it, on Aliyah afterwards. If not, what's the purpose of coming down? So he starts explaining uh, that there's Teu and Tikkun, and Shama comes down from t- the Nefesh Abamis is from Teu, Nefesh is from Tikkun. The Nefesh comes into the Nefesh to be able to reach a level of revealing the level of Teu. Okay, so he starts where we're in the middle of now. He says, we need to understand what the Medrash says. Initially, Hashem wanted to create the world of Eid Sadin, with the attribute of judgment. He saw that the world can't last, so he combined it at Eid Sadachman. So the Altreb is explaining, Gvorah doesn't mean concealment or, or lack of revelation. On the contrary, he quotes things that you see, the blood is Gvorah and the blood is the lifeline. <clears throat> what it means is, it comes down in a powerful way. Not, not does not only mean concealment, it means the greatest the greatest brachas that the Yidin got, Yitzchak blesses Yaakov on his deathbed, and he said, says, why does it say Elohim? It should say Hayyid Kevavke, because he's giving such lofty brachas. And the answer is, it means it's coming down in, in with power and might. Okay, so he says like this. Um, okay, we'll start like 15 lines in the end of the first column. <coughs> he said, <coughs> The other land, the other, on the other hand, the level of Gvura, that the revelation, the highest comes from Alokos, Biz with a tremendously strong power. Therefore, because it's so powerful, when it comes down lower, it comes in a way of concealment. And he says like this, because, what's the definition of Gvura? <clears throat> Chesed, kindness by definition means, the guy doesn't deserve it, and they do kindness. Yeah? We well, it many times. A guy works, and he comes to the boss for, for a check, for payroll. He's not asking Chesed. He deserves it. He worked. Right? But chesed is when you don't, the guy doesn't work. He doesn't do anything for you, and you give him money anyway. You help him out. Gvur, on the other hand, is severity. You don't deserve it. You don't get it. That's the definition of gvur. Gvur means you get it, you deserve it, you get it. You don't deserve it, you're not going to get it. So he says, because gvur is so powerful, when it comes down, it's too powerful to be given to somebody who doesn't deserve it. Therefore, he says, uh, um, I'm sorry, he said, Because it comes down so powerful. Because it doesn't come with such power and warmth. It can come all the way down like Chesed does. He give it Chesed to the low people. But Gvur is the level of Tehu, which is the level of the seven kings. Therefore, the Yud Svidus and El Mateo are called Malachim. Okay, in the Pasuk it says, these are the kings at the end of Ayishlach. These are the kings that ruled in Eden before. And over there it says they ruled, they died, they ruled, they died, they ruled, they died seven times, which are basically the seven meters of Tehu that had to break the Shvita Sekel and the Kalim broke. So he says, why are they called Malachim? Why are they called kings? Kings of power. Because the levels of Tehu are extremely powerful. And therefore, like Dr. Rebbe explains, we learned in the Kutatera, therefore when a person eats they're able to sustain themselves from something lower than, than them, whether it's animal, plant, inanimate. Why are they able to sustain themselves from a lower level? Because it comes from a higher level. 
Rabbi, which one goes lower? If Gevura goes ends up lower, lower, or Chesed in the love? Because Gevura ends up being cold also. It depends. Here he's saying the Chesed comes lower, but... <coughs> excuse me. But really, Gevura, I mean, Gevura also comes down lower. It depends. Depends what one wear. Okay, so he says now, Vapia Kabbalah Mavoyed. It says, Kabbalah, it says, Shebchina Sateyu Huribi Ha'er Umita Kelim. Okay, it says like this. What, why was there Shvira Sakelim? I mean, taking it literally, which obviously it's not. Why did the Kelim break in Tehu? So it says it, that there was no unity amongst the Svidas, and each Svidas was by itself. But it also says in Kabbalah, because Tehu had too much light and too little vessel. It's like you put water in a, in a glass container in the freezer, and the water expands, so the keli breaks, because it's not a keli anymore, it's too big. Teo had too much art, too little kelim, and he says, therefore it broke. Masha'enkin, on the other hand, though, the b'chin is taken, who's behaper is the opposite. Big kelim and little art. That's why the Rebbe used to say, or a lot of times to people, it should be, Eid is the tehu, and kalim the tikkun. It should be the light of tehu in abundance, but in an organized fashion, not, you know. Peter, shri biyar, what does it mean, shri biyar? Sha'ar v'chayiz babiz gabiz rav. It comes very powerful. When you say, shri biyar, that tehu had a lot of light, it doesn't mean in quantity, it means in the quality, and the power of the light was very powerful. Like the level of chesed of Tehu was midas chesed bis was chesed with very powerful powers. Therefore, they're all interconnected. We just said sometimes it says there was no unity amongst the spheres in Tehu. Chesed was chesed. He said now he's explaining why there was no unity. Because Chesed was so powerful, it couldn't tolerate Gvura. And, and Gvura was so powerful, it didn't tolerate Chesed. Therefore, it couldn't tolerate the unity of Chesed and Gvura. It was such a powerful Midah. He couldn't unite with the opposite. Chesed couldn't unite with Gvurda because Chesed was such a powerful Chesed that Gvurda couldn't exist. Gvurda was such a powerful Gvurda that Chesed didn't exist. For you call me the Bifnei Atman, every Midah was by itself. So what did Hashem say? Hashem saw that the world can't exist like this. In other words, when it says in the Medrash, when Hashem wanted and did create the world in Midah Sadin, he says, what is Midas Adin? It means the concepts like Tehu, that very powerful Midas, and therefore no, there was no tolerance between one Midas and the next Midas. And then he saw the world can't exist. You can't fix the world like that. You can't have unity. In order for the, to fix the world, there has to be the level of Tikkun. What's Tikkun? It has to be chesed and tolerance with gevura, and therefore tefedes unites chesed and gevura. There has to be, in other words, b'chinas ribi kelim umir to earn she'ar v'chais ein above his gabbis. It doesn't come in a powerful way that breaks the keli and doesn't tolerate anybody else. That b'chinas chesed b'kriyus calmly lochein yachol yisus galus chesed gevura shnei hafchim. Okay. Then you need to have the tolerance of both. <clears throat> like he says in, from Pikeyovis, the idea of to know how tolerant Hashem was, wait, the ten generations from Adam to Noach, Noach to Avram, <clears throat> until Avram Avinu came. Okay? Shemach Meshin Amida Bob is Gabrus. Because the Mida didn't come so powerful, Hashem was tolerant. I'm, uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, um, Avram Avinu Visavlonis. There's able to be this tolerance of somebody else. You can have 
two opposite things coexisting. Kamesha Betzinu, Matzinu Babinyan Beis HaMikdosh. Like it says, that we find by the Beis HaMikdosh, Shehaisa Simcha G'dayla Adma Eid. That the Simcha on the first Beis HaMikdosh was so tremendously powerful. Shehama Shlemesh Shir Hashidim. When Shlem HaMelech said Shir Hashidim, the Simcha was so great, Shlehaisa Miyem B'riya Salem. <clears throat> there wasn't such a simcha when Shlem HaMelech built the first base of Midrash <coughs> and said Shira Shirim. He says, Kamesh Yikos, Malik Kved Hashem is a bias. Like the Basik says, by um, the base of Midrash, the glory of Hashem permeated the whole base of Midrash. Shabbat Eish Lamayla, which, what was it? The fire came down from the Mizbech from above. Pchinez Gila Shechina Lamata. Nimsa Shoye Simcha Rabba Ma'id. And over there it says, Al api val chamasi, haisa liyad azais, l'meneyem ashebanu aisa. So Hashem said, I may, al api, I may anger and uh, my um, frustration, the city came about. Mima shaloka bas pari, okay, from what pari's daughter came and gave things to the base of Migdash. You know, there was tremendous simcha. And yet, at the same time, it was given from the evil powers. Al Api Val Hamas Hashem says, I built this house against my. Uh, uh, and there's an English expression, Al Api Val Hamas, literally means, it means my anger and my frustrations. Nimsa Shoyu Beis Hav Chim Yachad. Man Echod, there was Simcha and anger of Hashem at the same time. Behind, how did that be? How can you have that? He said, because that was the ultimate level of Tikkun. Tikkun is tolerating one because there's the Kalim are very wide, big Kalim, and the Midah, the Ord, is very limited. Erdus Mu'atim, the Kalim Murubim. He said, of Midah It became the world of Tikkun. So, Yochalias is Gala Samida Zebazep. And therefore, you can have the unity of the Midas. Why? Because each Mida wasn't so powerful <clears throat> and so strong. The Chesed is unlimited Chesed that it didn't tolerate anybody else. It only Chesed, not Gvura. Shemeach Hashem Amida viz Galas. Because the Mida and its revelation is not Oilach Vidi viz Gabis Ern in Cain, if that's the case. In other words, the Kaili was big enough to tolerate the art of chesed and the art of gvura together. Because the art was weaker, the keli was bigger, both. Because the art was weaker and the keli was bigger, so therefore it tolerates somebody else. When you're... Even in life you see that person that has a... <laughs> very powerful opinion as a bulldozer they don't tolerate anybody else that's the concept of dictators <clears throat> they're very powerful and therefore they don't tolerate anybody else there's no re- democrats and republicans in the dictatorship they're huh? not huh? they're not they can't be why because the dictator is so powerful <clears throat> he doesn't allow anything but himself in Tikkun, because there's more tolerance and there's more Rachmanis. Step back. What? It says that Hashem created the world with Midas Adin. What the first day Hashem created the light? Bereish is Bara Elohim. The Yom Elohim Yehi Ar. I know. So? So how could from Elohim come Or Is it what you were saying yesterday? That he said, I'll find the country. Elohim is very powerful, abundant, Lord. Like you were saying. The Ard was great. They were able to see from one end. It was too great for, on the contrary. It was too great for the world. Hashem had to limit it. Hashem took away the Ard. But it was bad power against the Shalomon. Bas party. Yeah. But the pearl, Bas party was part of the Shlomo's family. <laughs> okay, Okay, so now he's explaining the neshama comes down into the body. The neshama is the world of Tikkun, comes into the nefshabamis, which is the level of Tehu, right? Which is this power. 
So he says, in a nishma, Sodom comes from the level of Atzilus, which is Elam Atikun. Therefore, the Nishama Klula Mikol Amidas. Therefore, the Nishamas have Chesed and Gvurah at all ten levels. Kumuvur Betam, Shenkin Amalochim. The angels, though they come from Tehu, Machin Michol, Machin Gavriel, everybody's Kabif Neyatzme. Michol was only Ava. Right? Gavriel was only Gvura. Why? Why couldn't Gavriel and Michol have both? Because their source is Eilam Atehu. And because their source is Eilam Atehu, Chesed is Chesed and Gvura is Gvura, and that's it. They can't mix. Machan Michal is Rak Bechinis Ava Biz Gabrus Mei. It's a very powerful level of Ava. Machan Gavriel is Rak Bechinis Yere Biz Gabrus, Rav Sashal Mayim and Sashal Eit. Like one's Mayim and one's Eish, the two opposites. Yeah. Fire and water cannot coexist. <clears throat> Why? Because water is too powerful to tolerate fire. Fire is too powerful to tolerate Mayim, and therefore they can't coexist. Umizan, Nimshech, and there's where it comes out. The level of Merkava, Pnei Ariel Yamin, Pnei Sherel Asmoel. So that comes, therefore it says like this Eisa Sholem Bimreimov. We say in Shvanasri, Davening, Eisa Sholem Bimreimov means God makes peace on high. So the simple meaning of what we say in Davening, I mean, what peace is going on up there on high? There's Michal of Ava, and there's Gavriel of Gvura. And basically, it's an abundance, a powerful earth of chesed, a powerful earth of gvura, and Hashem makes peace between the two of them. How, how does Hashem make peace? One second. How does Hashem make peace? How could there be peace between Mayim and Eish, Michal and Gavriel, chesed and gvura, whatever it is? So the answer is, when both of them <coughs> are bottled to the cause, meaning... The, this one's doing chesed because this is what Hashem wants. And this one's doing gvoda because this is what Hashem wants. So therefore, because they're both doing it, because it's what Hashem wants, not what they want, so then you can have peace. When two people, yeah, say you have organizations, so they're doing a, a banquet or whatever it is, an activity. So people's ego gets in the way of getting along with everybody else. Or, or a better example, by the way, is uh, in sports. The only way a team could be successful is when there's no I. As the, as the coach once told him, when the name on the front of your uniform is more important than the name on the back of your uniform, that's when we'll win. Yeah? In, in basketball, <laughs> a guy wants to get more baskets. Yeah? But if he doesn't have teamwork, the team will not win. So there's no me. There's no name on the back. It's only the name of the team on the front. That's what matters. So even though there's chesed and gvura by Michal and Gavriel, but how can they have peace? And they don't tolerate one another. So Eisah Shalom B'mrem of Hashem makes peace by both of them realizing that there's a common cause and that's what we're interested in, not personal us, what the what the cause is, and therefore it happens. Like in a marriage or anything else. When the husband and wife, which are, in case you didn't know, opposites, if you need, I can have a lecture on that, why they're opposites. But the only way it works, if when both are bottled <coughs> to the cause of building a Jewish home. So there's no me or you, and it's us. Like I said yesterday, the Rebbe told somebody that. Um, the only the, when there's no I and me and it's us, then it, then it works, so to speak. Okay. Can I ask you what technical question? Mich- uh, Gavriel makes sense that he's uh, Gvura. Michal should have been something like Ahuva. Where does Michal mean uh, kindness? I don't know. Okay. Vine Benish Adam, middle of the second column, and eighteen. About the neshama of a person, the Gemara says, "Gimel shoot from Adam." The Gemara says, "There's three." The Gemara neither says, "There's three partners in creation of a person: father and mother, and the Hashem gives the neshama." The chayis never shabamis, the eifis 
and the chayis of the nefshabamis and birds come from the level of Adi Pnei Shon, or Mekedom, Me'elam HaTehu, when they come from the world of Tehu. The Zen, Amal Adam, therefore it says by on a person, Ochav HaKedem Tzartani, in Tum it says, Ochav HaKedem Tzartani, last and first. Now last and first are two opposites. Shemitzah Bechines HaTikon, Bishtaushlis Bechines Adam Badrega Gevei Yesef. In other words, once you're talking about down here, a <laughs> person is greater than animals. Shabchin is beimis nafla lamata mata ma'ed ma'ed. They fell very low. Down here, except in Beverly Hills, people are higher than animals. Masha'en kem b'mekaydam, but in the source, heim b'madreig al-gavar yeisen. They're much higher because they come from Teo, lifnei melach melach, before the world of Tikkun. Teo is higher than Tikkun. So down here, a person is greater. Up there in the source, the animal is greater. So down here, the Nefesh is is higher than Nefesh But in the source, because the Nefesh comes from Tehu, so this, that over there, it comes from a higher source. Therefore, what's the story? When the Nefesh, he asked, why does the Neshama come down, and how can the Neshama, by coming down, go higher? Because when the Neshama deals with the Nefesh he finds the Nefesh and the body, which come from the world of Tehu, and you reveal the source by refining it, getting it to do what Hashem wants. You refine it in a way that now the Nefesh Abamis' <laughs> source is revealed. So what source of Tehu is revealed? I mean, of the Nefesh Abamis is revealed, the level of Tehu. When, when it said it still exists? Yeah, Shvir Sakelim didn't happen. Broke, <laughs> what year did Shvir Sakelim happen? It's continuously, it's a level above time and place. There's no what time, the time above time and place happen. Shvir Sakalim is a spiritual level that's happening now. It's above time and place, so there is no time and place. I know we can't get it because our brains are time and place. It's not because we're, well, maybe it's because we're stupid, but, but the body, this is something which is not understood, so it doesn't matter that we're stupid. Even if we'd be smart, we wouldn't get it. We were totally broke. We came here and we're supposed to elevate, elevate. it. But that's continuously happening. So it's continuously happening? Yeah. No matter what we elevate, it's still going more. Yeah. Better. Yeah. Get a double shot. What happened to the... Let me ask you a very simple question. I thought we were going to finish One second. Job. You put Tefillin on yesterday, yeah? You put Tefillin on yesterday? Yeah. You elevated the Tefillin? Yeah. Why do you do it today again? Is it enough already? Yeah, I'll give you another example. Certain mitzvahs are daily. Yes? Certain mitzvahs are weekly. Certain mitzvahs are monthly. Certain mitzvahs are yearly. Yeah, you don't blow shafer every day. You blow shafer Rosh Hashanah. You don't do Lul of every day. Biblically, Lul of is one day. Yeah? Tefillin, you can't do once a year. <laughs> Correct? You have to put Tefillin every day. Talis, you do even seven days. Tefillin is only six days. Yeah? Tefillin is, uh, I mean, Talis is seven days. That means there are certain things that need to be refined daily, monthly, yeah. yearly, once every seven years, once every 50 years. And what you do, and Yevil lasts, that Kedusha that you bring down through the mitzvahs of Yevil lasts for 50 years. Tefillin doesn't last for 50. I mean, maybe the physical Tefillin do. But our action of putting on Tefillin, we say, okay, I'll see you 50 years from now. It doesn't work like that. Things, there are certain things that constantly we need to be elevated. Yesterday you ate breakfast. So I won't say bacon and eggs. So you had a kosher breakfast, yeah? You elevated the eggs and whatever. When the Jews left Egypt, weren't we told they were elevated 200 and something? Okay, so... So now we are they go to, to Egypt again as we speak. Too they elevated two oh two and now we have to do eighty six. Right. Why? You just said it's continuously happening. So then right. so there is more How more often do you go out of Egypt? He's Daily. asking a very good question. It's a very good question, but, but, but the bottom line is it's continuously also, happening. Uh, also, There's you see us every day. And every day. There's Rap yeah. Shvirat Kalim. Shvirat Kalim. Is every not every day, 
it's a continuous level. But when you do something good, the Rishima that it leaves is also infinite. And and it's there but you day. have to keep elevating it again because there's a new so they thing. Don't say you... Why are you not allowed to live in Mitzrayim? So it says in Kabbalah, why can't you live in Mitzrayim? Because all the sparks are elevated. Yeah? The Jews left Egypt, they elevated all the sparks. So why are you allowed to go for a visit to Egypt? So Kabbalah says, because there are sparks that come there from different places that weren't elevated by the Jews when they left Egypt. So we should have been able to, we should be able to move back to Egypt also. Huh? We should be able to move to Egypt also. Why? You want to move back to Egypt? I'm just saying, it, it, it's... Saddam Muntaka lived, lived, lived in Egypt, but he was forced to live there. No, but I'm saying he was not forced to, and even if all the smoke, the next day they came back. Alexander. The next second they came back. The Rebbe said, all the spar, all the Avedis and Birurim have been done. The Rebbe said this many years already. Okay, what does that mean? Okay. Avedis and Birurim is done. All we have to do is polish the buttons that the Friedrich Rebbe said. And the Rebbe many times said that was already done. Okay, so why do you put on the phone today? It's done already. The Sheikh is already here, some people say. He didn't say Mashiach. Mashiach is here in Taylor. Uh, we have to accept it. Okay, whatever. But why, why do we do mitzvahs? Because it still needs to be elevated again and again and again. And Mashiach comes. That's what done. But well, we still put tefillin on. The first era, yes. Second era, we'll see. We'll be, we'll be on a level of Shabbos. It's like painting Shabbos. Painting. It's going to be uh, what it is. So what does it mean? Did we polish the buttons or we didn't polish the buttons? The Rebbe said we polished the buttons. So why is Mashiach here? The Rebbe said Mashiach said we didn't accept him yet. So in our world, it's not here yet. If I walk into a room and you close your eyes, I'm not, as far as you're concerned, I'm not there yet. Right? Yeah. I'm here, but you don't look at me, so I'm not here. It's <laughs> from your perspective. But that means also difficult to understand. But anyway, that's... Uh, okay, back. Of Elah's ace, and therefore, Hava Bamit said Nefeshabam, because the Nefeshabam is comes from a higher place. So when you refine the Nefeshabam and you reveal the love that the Nefeshabam has, that's much stronger than the love of the Nefeshul Lakis. Like we said the other day, it afterwards, what's the Pasik telling us? That the Mida of the Nefeshabam is the Mida, it's not what they, but the actual feeling, the Mida. Of love and fear is stronger by an animal than it is by a person. Which is even again, it's the world of tail. So it's no kalim. It's much stronger. Which comes a lot of power. Comes in the world of tail. It fell down in Shvira Sakalim Lamata Mata Maid. Bave the Gashmi is to be a nifra, to be even separated from Lukus. Avok Shinavada Vaila Lamaila Bitfila. But when you refine the world, the Nefeshabam is in Davening, then revealing the source. Azai who bis gabrasrav of Avis Bukhome Dechom. And the Gemara says like this: the Gemara says in Bhavakama. Somebody asked Rav Nachman a question at night, and he didn't answer him. The next day he met him, he said to, he answered him the question. So he said, Rav Nachman said to him, You know why I didn't tell you it last night? Why didn't I answer you last night? Simply, I didn't eat dinner. I didn't eat ox meat. Meaning, uh, my brain wasn't functioning because I didn't eat. So what does that mean? That the physical behemoth that he ate gave him the koyach to learn Torah, to explain, and, uh, uh, to answer a question in Torah. He had, like it says, okay.